Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 43. It's on reaction intermediates. One of the most important chemical reactions inside our cells is glycolysis, where we break a six carbon glucose molecule down into two three carbon pyruvates. Where does that occur? Right outside the mitochondria, right outside here. But it doesn't occur in one step. In other words, there are lots of elementary steps along the way and therefore lots of reaction intermediates along the way as well. We break that glucose into glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, and so what we're doing is adding energy, releasing energy all along the way. But lots of times all we see is that initial reactant and then the final product which is going to be all the way over here is our pyruvate. And so essentially in an overall chemical reaction we're going from reactants to products but it's not just in one step it's elementary step after step and finally we have this whole reaction mechanism. And so what do we call the things between the products and the reactants? The things that appear but then disappear those are going to be the intermediates and we can't necessarily see those and so we have to figure those out through experimentation. And when I was coming up with a good analogy for this, the best one I could come up with is how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. We get to see what goes in, we get to see the caterpillar, we get to see what emerges, but we don't really get to see what's going on. In other words, the formation of that chrysalis, we don't get to see in all that metamorphosis going on, we don't get to see that. And so chemical reactions are essentially the same way. And so we have to use experimentation to figure out what's going on. And so let's look at an actual chemical reaction. So here's our chemical reaction here. That's our overall chemical reaction, but it's going to be made of two steps. And so we've got step one and step two. And all of those together is going to be that overall equation. But if you look here, a good way to figure out what are going to be the intermediates is to just start canceling things out that aren't in our final equation. So if we look at this is overall equation, let's just go up here and start crossing out things that show up here. And so this is going to be one thing. So we see nitrogen dioxide. What else do we have? We have this carbon monoxide. So I'm going to go under the reactant side and cross that out. We've also got this nitrogen monoxide. I'll cross that out. And then we've got one more to cross out, and we're going to cross it out like that. And so what we find is there's a lot of stuff in those elementary steps that don't necessarily show up in that overall reaction. And so if we were to write those, we find that some of those are in our initial reaction. So an example could be this nitrogen dioxide that's going to be right here. But we're also finding these things that just show up for a little bit and then disappear. We call those reaction intermediates. And so how do we figure all these out? Well, that's what a lot of chemistry is. It's figuring out through experimentation what all of these intermediates are. And so this whole pathway I talked about with glycolysis is called the EMP pathway. Where does it get its name? It gets its name from the three scientists that figured this out over years and years of study. And so again, did you learn that experimentation can be used to determine the presence of reaction intermediates, things that we don't necessarily see? They're not reactants, they're not products. If you did, then you learned what I wanted you to, and I hope that was helpful.